out of the house this morning, all together, we can all wear pants on this one. This is good. All right. Let's all stand and praise the Lord this morning. Revive us again, 275. That's gotcha. Everybody's ready to praise the Lord this morning, right? All right. Here we go. Let's get revived again. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, like the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, like the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God. For thy spirit of life, who has shown us the Savior and scattered our light. Hallelujah, like the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, like the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb. Hey, turn around, give somebody a wave, try not to touch each other, but look at the light. <laughs> take that in a bad way, but 50 or above, and uh, we, we're glad that you're here, and I'm curious to how many that are above 50 are going to try to sneak in on the second one today, what do you think, you know, be quite a few there, I'm sure, but it's good to have, we have visitors with us this morning, please welcome our visitors to our service. Our Wednesday night service will be this, we will start back this Wednesday night. Uh, business as usual, what we'll do is we'll just spread out on our Wednesday night service as we've done this morning, so remember that. Remember those that are sick. Keep in touch there. Remember the ministries that we have that are out, uh, you know, where we've been, we've had some young people that have just taken this thing and went out and, and not let anything bother them and went and delivered groceries and those things. And my heart goes out to those families, but also I thank those that have taken initiative to do something for the Lord. I just ask and pray this morning as I preach, <clears throat> I'll be preaching on silver and gold. Is it 
title of the message is going to be in Acts and uh, chapter 3. I just want to give you a forewarning. It's not a Mother's Day message. Normally I would preach a Mother's Day message, but the Lord laid this on my heart for some reason or another. And let me tell you, as a pastor, I know you don't fight the Lord because you don't win that battle. <laughs> the Lord is in control, and so he laid it up on my heart, and I'm going to preach that. I will briefly talk about mothers and how precious they are to me. Even mother-in-laws, as mine sits in the presence this morning, I don't want to miss my mother-in-law, the blessed woman that she is, and be sure that I honor her as well. But no, you mothers are blessed, blessed ladies, and I appreciate what you do and the families that you've raised. It's good to see families, good to see your faces. I don't know about y'all, I was excited to get back in church today. I really was. I was excited. It, for, a, for a pastor, it's one of the most difficult times I've been through as a pastor is not being able to see y'all's faces. You know, some of you are like, well, we could have done without yours. So I told Brother Corey I brought two face masks for him in case one of them fell off. But anyway, it is good to see your faces this morning. And it is good to see you in the house of the Lord. And you are a blessing to me for just being here. And I look forward, I look forward to the time we can all come back together as one group and worship God and, the, and honor God in the way that God intended. Brother Tim. Say again. Uh, Ashton had a wedding shower. She had a few words she wanted to tell the church. Hi, Walnut Springs. I just wanted to say thank you so much if you got me a baby shower gift or, um, well, I guess that's the only shower I'm having. A baby shower gift. We just did a Facebook Live and opened a lot of them, but I know some of y'all don't have Facebook, but we love everybody and we miss everybody. And I am so grateful that I do have a church family still, even though I live in Arizona. And I wish so bad that we could be home in Texas and with all of you, but we can't right now. So I hope everyone is staying safe and I hope that you're all doing well. And you will be the first to know when Baby Hayes makes his arrival. Um, my due date is supposed to be like August 9th or something, so we'll see. But I miss you all, and I love you all, and I can't wait to see you soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ashton. We're all going to do 130. Yeah. It's good to see her. 130. Let's stand one more time. One more time. Sing it to the Lord this morning. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, blessed be the name of the Lord, the glories of my God and King, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, the name that calls my ears, blessed be the name of the Lord. The music in the sinner's ears, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. He breaks the power of canceled sin. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His blood can make the fires clean. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We are looking for a birthday boy or girl. Do we have any birthdays this week? All right, looky there. Got some more? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, you're under 50. Oh, okay, all right. Well, happy event. Here's your Yeah, we'll get you. We'll get you. I know. 
All right, how many more? Is Miss Bobby a happy birthday? Oh, well, yes, you are. You're older than Miss Bobby. <laughs> Let's say happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Born again in salvation. How many have you? Man, happy birthday, guys. All right, is there any anniversaries? Any anniversaries? this week? Okay. We will go to our last one. What is it? Two, five, 295? All right. I'm on the road this morning. I got some neat feedback, babe. Turn that white one down.
do miss my choir. Uh, turn this up. There we are. Kind of uh, weird not having choirs here today, so it's kind of throwing me off, but that's all right. We'll make it through. Need to There we go. Uh, hope you guys had a good, good quarantine. I saw Brother Larry, I guess, at Walmart. He's doing good. I uh, wanted to kind of him to open us back up, but it's all right. Uh, I'm going to sing one of his songs. set up last week for the parking lot and it didn't come in in time but if you're in the area I don't know how far it transmits 89.9 the message is going over the radio wave as well so uh, that would just be for in the parking lot or the area you know <laughs> that might be a bad thing for those who show up late for church and say, oh we just sat in a car and listened to it I would have rather you be in the service with us this morning is what, I'd rather. But, uh, what a blessing it is I, I'm, I don't know about y'all I need church Amen. I do. It is a place to where I come and I can relax and I recharge from the chaos that we go through in our weekly lives. It's a difficult time that we live in. I know it's a stressful time that we live in. But church, through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, he stresses me. It gives me the strength that I need. Because I know that I don't have the strength within myself. But I know that God, through his Holy Spirit, through his Son, Jesus, can give me the strength to make it through from week to week. Amen. I look forward to that day as Brother Steve.
poor midget to where we get to stand in front of God, stand there with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and worship God the way he truly intended. What a blessing that will be. I hope that you can say that as well. I'll be over in Acts chapter 3. Let me turn my mic up. There we go. Acts chapter 3, starting in verse 1. No, I'm good on, on the mic. I just moved it. I've got a, quite a few uh, verses to read this morning. I normally don't read these many verses. Sometimes I'll preach off one or two verses, sometimes three or four, but I actually have quite a few this morning, and I pray that you will bear with me. First, I would like to thank you for the gifts that you sent my daughter and son-in-law, uh, Delton and Ashton Reynolds, who are in Arizona. You know, they're expecting their first child, my second grandson. We're expecting we thank you so much for that. I know they miss y'all, and they love y'all, but uh, as he serves in the military, Sometimes God places them in different places and, and they're in different things. But I do know this, that wherever he was at, he was training in Virginia here recently. I don't know if any of his buddies watched it or not, but they were watching our church and on this message, the message that God had given us. And they were there and sharing the gospel in the way that they could. And still working in the ministry of what was a blessing to me as a father and as a father-in-law to know that they're, they're still letting God lead them in their lives. And I pray that you would do the same. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer before we begin this. And uh, again, once again, I just thank you. And I want to briefly talk about mothers for a moment. And then we'll go into the message of silver and gold. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you once again, Lord, asking forgiveness for my many sins. Lord, I praise you. And, and Lord, I just glorify your name today on allowing us to come together, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you, you would put this virus aside, Lord, Lord, that you would just let it fade away, or Lord, that it would be phased out, or Lord, that it would be totally destroyed, Lord, and Lord, that we would give you the honor and the glory for it, Lord. And Lord, not something that man has done, but we would truly rejoice and praise on what God has done. And Lord, I pray that we would turn our eyes towards God. I pray that we would put God number one in our lives, Lord. And Lord, if we would do these things, I believe within my heart that we would not go through these trials and tribulations and punishments. Lord, I know that it's because this nation has turned away from you that you've allowed these things to happen to us, Lord, to open our eyes, to open our hearts. And I pray that our eyes and hearts would be open. Lord, I pray that this morning that our hearts would be open to receive your word. Lord, that we would just apply these things. And Lord, that we would ask ourselves, have I been in a situation as Peter and John before? And have I missed my opportunity to witness and to teach or to preach or to, to give share the gospel with someone that's lost, Lord? And Lord, I pray that you would just have our minds always thinking about you, always thinking about sharing the blessed salvation that we have with someone that's lost. And Lord, I pray that you would just motivate us, and I pray that you would give us strength, I pray that you would give us guidance, and Lord, I pray those that are wavered that you would give direction. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed day, this beautiful day that we may spend in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. You know, this morning's message will be about Silver and gold. And I may get a little loud this morning. I haven't been able to preach to a crowd in some time now. So you understand. Now, preaching to a car is one thing. Preaching to that TV camera is another thing. But preaching to y'all is a whole nother level. Amen? amen? See, I love to hear the amens, right? I love to hear the amens in God's house because that's just us uh, glorifying God. And I, I thought about last week as we were out in the parking lot. I thought, just honk your horn and then... I knew Judy was behind the steering wheel, so I didn't want to do that. But anyway, no, I think there was Judy. But I didn't want to disrupt the service that way. But I thank you, or thank you as a church, for being willing to do whatever we can do to worship God. You see, a lot of places gave up. They just quit. Well, we'll start back when it's over. I don't believe that God intended for his people to quit. Amen. Old Paul set a good example for us. Amen. Much less Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, set the ultimate example for us not to give up. I think about mothers when it comes to give up. As you know, mamas, you know, they're precious, and the Bible says they're 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 better than rubies. And and I think about this message of silver and gold, and I think about mothers and how blessed that they are, and that they're more precious than silver and gold. Especially those mothers that have shared the word of God with their children. You know, a couple weeks ago I preached on feed the sheep, right? There's mothers that didn't stop, and I know there's some in our presence this morning, I could call them out by name, but I won't, that have stopped and made sure that their children were taught the gospel during these times where we couldn't meet. What a blessed mother that is. What a blessed family that is. And let me tell you something, God will bless you for it. Amen. Mothers are special. 
Mothers never give up. God never gives up. Mothers got their example from Jesus Christ. Mothers got their example from God on never giving up. Doesn't matter what the situation is. A mother will always love their child till their last breath. What a blessing it is to have mothers. This morning we see as God has sent forth two of his disciples. And he sent them, and they're going to, we're going to talk about this in depth here in just a moment. But he sent these Peter and John as they were out, and they were they're going out, and they didn't just stop because Jesus had died and was resurrected and rose again and went to heaven to be with the Father. They didn't just stop. They didn't just quit because Jesus, they, well, you know what he did? Is it took them a little while to get their feet on them, and it'll take us a little while to get back started and to get back into the rhythm of things. But let me tell you something. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep praising God, and we're going to keep giving the message in hopes that those that are lost will receive salvation. But Peter and John, they didn't stop. They, they were together. They went together to the temple. I'm going to read that here in just a moment. Let me tell you this. You may be together somewhere. You may be together at Walmart. You know, it amazes me how many people are at Walmart but refuse to come to church, and I won't get started on that before I get in trouble. But there's a lot of Walmart walking around not scared of anything, right. but people are too scared to come to church. Right. I think we've got our priorities. Wrong. Right. We're focused on the wrong things. And that's what the, the message today is going to be, is focusing on the wrong things. Silver and gold. Acts chapter 3, starting in verse 1. Again, it's a lot of scripture to read. Bear with me, okay? It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. hour. And I'm going to elaborate on that verse here in just a moment. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go in the temple ask an alms and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and John said look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Let me tell you, there's a lot of us that need to be limping in the church and praising God. There's a lot of us that need to be jumping up and down and praising God that we have an opportunity to come together. Even though it may be half of our congregation, we still got to come together. And you know what? I'm excited about being here today that we may praise God. Amen. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was, was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly, Solomon's greatly wondered. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why ye look so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I want not that through ignorance you did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all of his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Let me tell you this, and you'll hear me expound upon this again here in just a moment. We've been told over and over and over what's coming. 
And when it comes, we act surprised. This virus is no surprise. It's no surprise. But we act like it's a surprise. We've been told over and over by the prophets, by the preachers, by the pastors, by the evangelists. We've been told over and over that there's a second coming. That Jesus is coming again. Yet people are oblivious and they don't listen. Peter here is preaching to them. He took an opportunity to preach to them, to let them know, listen, you didn't pay attention the first time. This is the things that you've done. Listen now, hear me now, that you may receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Let me tell you something. If you're here joining us in person, if you're on, on watching the video or whatever, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're running out of time. Amen. Amen. If you don't hear me say anything else today, nothing else sticks to you, get this part of the message. You're running out of time. It's short. The clock is ticking. Peter says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted. That was not just for the Israelite people. That is for the lost people of the entire world. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God rise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things whatsoever he shall say, Unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear the prophet, listen closely, and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that the prophet, that prophet, shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. And to you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, set him to bless you, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. May God add the blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. I don't know if I've ever read that much before, but it's a lot. we got an event taking place here. We have an event where Peter and John went together to the temple in an hour of prayer. That doesn't sound like that's a big event. That doesn't sound like that's a big thing. But these two men were very different in their approach to Christianity. Peter was impetuous, forthright, and very bold. Peter was one of them guys, be like my, I have a friend in Oklahoma named Keith, and he'll always tell me when I see him, and we don't get to see each other very often, but we've always been best friends. When I see him, he'll say, let me tell you something. Well, Peter was one of them men. He said, let me tell you something. And he was going to tell you about Jesus. And he was going to tell you boldly. He was one of them in-your-face type people. Some of you like those type persons. Some of you do not. But it's amazing how God took Peter and John and he put them together. John, on the other hand, was quiet and a retiring one. He was, he was one who was tender and compassionate. Yet they went together in an hour of prayer. You see, when we come to church, we all worship together. Personalities, it doesn't matter. Jesus Christ is the binder that holds us together. Amen. These two men had different approaches, but they had one goal. You see, as Christians, we may have different approaches, but we should have one goal. And it's lead the lost to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. They went together in an hour of prayer, and they set the example for God's people to follow. We may go about things in two different ways, or you know, but our hearts must be in the right place. These two guys went together, but their unity was rewarded. As the church comes back together, if we have one heart, one mind, and one goal, that unity will be rewarded. The unity will be rewarded. When they come together, what does it say about having one mind of one accord in the Bible? If we have one mind and one accord, let me tell you something, God is going to bless it. These men had one mind and one accord. They didn't have to step to the side and huddle up and talk about things. They knew exactly what their purpose was. They knew exactly where they were going. And they knew exactly what they were doing. There's a lot of Christians out there that are flying by the seat of their pants. They don't know what their goal is. Someone says, well, I don't know what my purpose is. I can tell you what your purpose is. Share the gospel. 
A lame man. He wasn't injured on the job. Was it something that happened to him later in life? He was lame from birth. And he was carried to the gate daily. Now I think about this. And I'm on the middle. <laughs> First time ever, right? <laughs> that would be a lie. We want to take people to church. We want to keep people in church. But we want to drop them off and move on. You get my point? We want to drop them off. It's a great thing to get them there. It's a great thing to get in there. But when we get them there, let's not just drop them off and leave them there. Let's finish it. You see, this man, they brought him to the church and they, they dropped him off to the temple, but that was as far as he could go because, see, in that day and time, if he was lame, especially from birth, that meant that his parents had done something wrong. That meant that he was cursed from God in some reason or another, but that was not the case. Because we all have got sin in our life. Amen? Amen? We've all got some kind of disformity in our lives. A lot of times we can't see it until the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. But he was at the gate, and it's amazing how they called the gate beautiful, and this man sat in front of it. History tells us that this gate was most probably, and I use that word intentionally, made out of bronze. And they called it, it was a beautiful sight to see. So you had this beautiful gate there. You had this, all these things looking, and it was an entrance into the temple where everybody went through, and everybody looked, and then all of a sudden, the lame man. <laughs> What kind of picture do you like that painted? To the ones that are going to the temple. To pray to God. Right there in front of the church. Right there at the gate. There's a man that needs Jesus. There's a man that needs to be healed. Who was lame from the beginning. He's laying right there in the door. You know what people did? He's on this side. They walk this way. Somebody needs to do something about that. Right? Hey, let's be honest. We've all been there and said that before. Amen? Somebody need to do something about that. The gate is beautiful. We can't have him sitting there begging for money. We can't have him there messing up the front of the church. We can't have him there messing up the front of the gate. Somebody's got to do something about that. You know what was amazing? Peter and John come by. He's sitting there. And he looks at him. You know what Peter and John did? They looked right at him. The man got excited. I'm going to get something special. These guys are going to give me some alms. They're going to give me just a little bit of money. And it's going to be worthwhile. I mean, sitting here and begging all day long. It's going to be worthwhile. This is going to fix all my problems. Let me tell you something, brother and sister. Silver and gold ain't going to fix your problem. It's not going to happen. It don't matter how much money we throw at this coronavirus. It ain't going to fix the problem. Let me tell you what can fix. Jesus Christ can fix the problem. Peter and John stood there and they looked at him. And he looked at him. This man thought he was going to get something special. He thought he was going to get some alms because these guys, you know, they're going to church to pray, right? So they're compassionate. Peter says, I ain't got no silver and gold. What I got, I'll give to you. Let me tell you something. You don't have to be a millionaire to witness for God. You don't have to be a preacher to witness to God. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a teacher. You don't have to be a Bible theologian. I've had people say, well, I get scared. Why? Tell them about your experience. And about the time you receive salvation. And the Holy Spirit will take those words and apply them to that heart. Amen. In the only way that the Holy Spirit can. And it will touch that heart in a way that God intended. Don't be afraid. Peter and John weren't afraid. They weren't afraid of what everybody else thought. Well, everybody else agreed with them. They didn't take a vote. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. They said, we don't have silver and gold, but what we got, we'll share with you. And he looked, he said, you rise up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to make sure that there was no misunderstanding which Jesus they were talking about. Amen? Amen. A lot of people got a whole lot of Jesus. Let me tell you something. I got one. Amen. And he's the beloved, the begotten son of God. Amen. Not a bunch of them. Just one. But I like how Peter put it. Jesus of Nazareth, you knew exactly who he was talking about. There wasn't any loopholes. There wasn't any this, that, or the other. Cousin three times removed. He knew exactly who Jesus was. And he said it on purpose because he wanted everybody else to know where the power came from. 
You see, I'm going to get into politics just a teeny bit. Take, hold your breath. <laughs> Ain't scared. See, the mayor of New York made a boastful statement. And he said, God didn't have nothing to do with this. Woo, wait a minute now. You better back up your truck. We did this and we did that. Let me tell you something. Those are grounds that you don't want to walk on. That's shaky grounds. That's thin ice. However, and whatever analogy you'd like to put on it, that is something to be scared of. You don't take credit for what God has done. Amen. You don't put yourself in a place of a godly figure. Don't believe me. Ask Nebuchadnezzar. You don't do those things. Peter and John knew their place and they said, don't look around at us for the things we've done. Don't, don't come to us saying this, that, and the other and look what we've done. We haven't done anything. It was Jesus Christ of Nazareth that did this. Jesus healed this man. What did this man do? Jumped up. The Bible says he leaped up. <laughs> I know we're Baptists. When's the last time you heard somebody jump up out of the pew and say, Hallelujah! Right? When's the last time you heard that? It would probably shock us all. We'd be like, Elizabeth, here I come, right? <laughs> We'd have a heart attack, right? We scared to death. Somebody jumped up and said, Hallelujah! God has just touched my heart with his word and his message. Don't worry about what the preacher says. I don't care what I say. It's what God says. Because that's what matters. We should be praising God. Praising God, He allowed us to come together today. Amen. I missed y'all. I missed y'all. We see this man, he jumps up on his feet. Instead of running down the road, hooping and hollering and doing this, that, and what he did, he went into the temple. You see, a place that he was rejected from. Now, all of a sudden, the doors are open. Can't nobody say, well, you're cursed, you can't come into the church. You're this or you're that. You can't come to the church. What he did, he got to go inside. And he went inside, you know, and they didn't like this because they, you remember what they did to Jesus? Other than the crucifixion, they rejected him. So he comes and I see him and I paraphrase. Give me a little leeway. He's jumping up now. He's praising God. He's praising Jesus and he's hugging Peter and John and he's holding on to them. Guess what he's doing? He's drawing the crowd. Try that at Walmart next time you go. <laughs> security will be right. You won't have to worry about hugging someone. You'll be getting hugged. Security will hug you right on out the door. But he was excited about what had just happened to him. He was excited that someone loved him enough to stop. Look down at him and say, Brother, we got something we're going to give you. And it's much better than silver and gold. And you know who it comes from? Where is our compassion went? Where is our heart went? Where have we been? We see people daily. And need help. We see people that need spiritual help, need spiritual guidance. What do we do? We got to take by those blinders. We put them on. We walk by because we don't want to see what's going on. We sometimes think to ourselves, I just don't want to know. You remember when we were studying in the book of Daniel? <laughs> that right there opened our eyes up, did it not? <laughs> Son told me, said, Pastor, I, I think we just need to stop. I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> but you know what? We got to know. We got to know. We got to share the gospel. We got to show that compassion that Jesus did. We got to be there for those that are hurting, the ones that are lying, the, the people that, that, are, that are in need. You see, we want money in our lives. We think that money's going to fix everything. You look back and you look at the lotto winners. A lot of them are worse off now than they were before they got the money. I'm not saying they all are. I'm just saying the majority are. They're miserable. Money doesn't fix it. Money can fix it. What happens to money? It perishes. It disappears. It's temporary. But Jesus is permanent. Aren't you tired? buying things and getting things and it's just temporary. Doesn't it get old? You know, see, when I buy something, it's supposed to last forever. <laughs> I've always been that way. If I buy a pair of shoes and they laugh at me at church camp every year, I, I get a pair of shoes out. Now, I'm not a tennis shoe. I wear boots all the time. Church camp is one of the only places 
Unless I go walk in the evenings, which I hadn't done that sometimes, you can tell, but I go to church camp, my tennis shoes literally are dry rotted. The last two years in a row, Miss Dee can attest to this, we've been going through there and I'll get to hear something flopping and I'll look at my tennis shoes come apart on the bottom. The, the, the glue has literally dry rotted away on my tennis shoes and I have a blowout there and I've got to go find some more tennis shoes. But see, I expect things to last forever. People think all these temporary things last forever. They think this money is going to last forever. It's not going to last forever. It either runs out or you die and you can't take it with you. You see, we hunt through silver and gold and a lot of men have lost their lives over just a little bit of gold. They spent their whole livelihood just to get a little bit of gold. They, they sacrificed family. They sacrificed God. They sacrificed all these things. And the joke of it all is they did all this for this precious material that we look at here on this earth. This precious gold that we look at here on this earth. They wasted all their lives trying to get that. And you know what the joke of it is? In heaven it's payment. <laughs> you think God don't have a sense of humor? In heaven it's payment. You're going to walk, wipe your feet on it in heaven. It's nothing. It's like asphalt that we use to run up and down the road with. It's like a paved stone you know, driveway or a, a concrete driveway. It's nothing but a pathway. God says, you focused on the wrong thing. Peter and John were letting all the people that thronged around this man, let them know y'all focused on the wrong thing. I want you to hear me. Jesus is the only one who can fix our current situation. He's the only one. You can come up with all the vaccines you want. They don't mean a thing in the world to me. You can come up with all the social distancing that you want. They don't mean a thing in the world to me. Jesus is the only one that can fix our current situation. I like how Peter was not only speaking to the people that was around him, but he was speaking also to the Israel nation. Turn back to God. Our nation needs to turn back to God. Right. Do you pray for your nation? Do you pray for your leaders? I do. I pray instead of looking to this person or that person, look to God for your answers. Amen. Stay focused on God. When I started passing this church several years ago now, <laughs> the main goal was what? Put God in number one. Let me tell you something. Our nation's got to put God in number one. And keep focused on God. That's all we got to do. One thing. One thing. We don't have to focus on all these other things. We don't have to focus on the politics of it. We don't have to focus on the financial side of it. We don't have to focus on the stock market or all those things. Or We don't have to focus on tithing. We don't have to focus on this or that or the other. We focus on God. And we put God number one and everything else falls right where it's supposed to be. It's simple. But we've complicated us with simple things. Peter told them, he said, Repent ye therefore. And be converted that your sins may be blotted out. He goes, you can be forgiven for what you've done. A lot of people think that, oh, I'm too bad. I've done this, done that. You can be forgiven for what you've done. Our nation can be forgiven for what we've done. If we only ask Jesus Christ to lead our heart. If we only ask Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior. If those that are wayward, those that are backslidden, if we would only ask to be restored. Jesus is standing there. Just like Peter and John, he's standing there with his hand out saying, look, I can fix this. Take me by the hand. Peter wants the nation, his nation, to turn back to God. The spiritual lame need to stop asking for silver and gold and ask for a redemption through Jesus Christ. Again, there is no other way. We have something in common with the healed lame man. We are focused on the temporary things. Jesus said, where your treasure is, therefore your heart will be also. If you look in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19 through 21, Jesus himself says, lay not. Now, let me give that to you in layman's terms. Do not. Is that simple enough? People like to complicate up the Bible. Let's make it simple. Do not, okay? Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth, wherefore moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. That's because that's where it matters. 
where neither the moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus knew we were going to focus on the wrong things. He knew we were going to build a gate called beautiful. Can we go look at that gate and go, ooh, look at that, how pretty that is as we go into the building and we go into the church and we'd be blind and oblivious to all the lost sinners on the way. I pray that God will open your hearts up if you're a born-again Christian. And you'll look around and say, well, I'm in lockdown. I'm this, that, and that. Let me tell you something. You're really not locked down. You've got Facebook and Twitter and Tweetybug or whatever all the other things that y'all use. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't social media. But you got all these things you can get on. Let me tell you something. You still share the gospel. You can share the gospel. Jesus knew we would lose focus and go astray. He left the message for us to see and abide by. Gold, again, is considered a precious thing. But it fades away. I ask you today, as I get ready to close, Brother Tim, what are you focused on? What is your main focus? Are you focused on getting back to work? It's not a bad thing to be focused on. Are you focused on finances? Hey, we got to survive. We got to eat, right? A lot of things to focus on. Those are not bad things, but those should be secondary, thirdly, fourthly, fifthly, on down the line things. We should be focused on God. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, for my sins. And he rose on the third day. But yet he still stands with his arms wide open, waiting to accept you as his child. If you're lost, one of the first things you got to do is acknowledge that you're lost. You got to understand where you're at. You got to understand what's going on. You see, people have said to me before, and I'll and reiterate this, but say it one more time, and I'll say it again, I'm sure. People say, Well, why are you preaching to the older group of the church about salvation? Because some are lost. Uh, oh, Pastor, there's no way. We've been in the church, we've been members for 20 years. Uh, do you want me to share, share the story of our piano player of 93 years old, Miss Christine Temple, that got saved or approved? right before she passed away, let me tell you something, that's why we preach the gospel. Amen. Because those are lost. We don't assume anything. Don't assume that your son or your daughter or your niece or your nephew, your son-in-law or your daughter-in-law are saved. Talk to them. Talk to them. Ask them to share when they receive Jesus Christ. You've got to acknowledge that you're lost, that you're doomed to an eternity in hell without Jesus Christ. There is no other way to be saved but through Jesus Christ. No other way. You can't bow your way in. It's been tried and it didn't work. You can't lie your way in. You can lie to yourself all you want to. God knows the truth. A lot of people are lying to themselves saying, oh, I'm okay. No, you're not. You don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord, Savior. you ain't okay. You're not okay. you got to acknowledge that you're a sinner. You're doomed to an eternity in hell without Jesus Take Jesus by the hand and ask him to forgive your sins. Just like he said, your sins can be blotted out. Blotted out. Removed. Cast away. You can be forgiven of those sins. You pray to Jesus, Jesus, I know I'm lost. I know I'm a sinner. I know that I'm doomed to an eternity period. Jesus Christ, I ask you today to be my Lord and Savior. You know what will happen if you're earnest and you believe? It's in your heart. You know what Jesus is going to do? He's going to come in there. He's going to forgive you sins. He's going to save you. And then you get to receive the eternal promises I have. When you die, you will go to heaven to live eternity with Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Take Jesus by the hand, ask him to forgive your sins, to be your Savior, and you too can leap and rejoice in praising God. As we stand, both him. 243, 243. <clears throat> I kind of old, sick for a country to which I live. Oh,